Hey gang, Jane back today with the second video in my series of crochet tutorials on simple little shapes. The first one in the series was on squares and today's shape is going to be the hexagon. So have you often wondered how to create a specific shape when working at granny square idea? Or do you get confused as to where to place the corners and how many stitches to use for each edge? This crochet tutorial series on simple little shapes will demystify this process for you. We'll work through each shape, creating it from the very same centerpiece to show you how one circle can become many shapes. Then you can use the principles of this method to create new shapes out of any of your granny squares. These are perfect for using up leftover yarn and for quick, easy projects. Each tutorial will focus on a different shape, guiding you through the three rounds needed to create it. As we explore each shape in the series, I'll share straightforward methods for calculating the stitches needed for each side. This technique will empower you to adapt any crochet shape with ease. Hey, if you haven't already, be sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you're enjoying these tutorials, please like and share them with your friends. That helps me to keep this free content coming and help inspire more people to get creative. Today, we're going to be focusing on the hexagon. Before we start crocheting this new shape, though, let's take a moment to review all the shapes we'll be covering. We start with a center circle. Our example will have 24 stitches, which we achieve in two rounds. With this shape, we can turn it into a larger circle, or we can work other shapes by working corners into the next round. The most common shapes used for granny squares are the square with four corners and four edges, the hexagon with six corners and six edges, and the octagon with eight corners and eight edges. Last week, we did the square, and this week, we're going to focus on the hexagon. We start with a basic circle of two rounds. It's the same circle we used in the first video of the series for the square. It's made up of one round of 12 double crochet and then a second round of two single crochet per stitch, which will give you a total of 24 stitches. If you'd like to walk through these two rounds with me, you can check that out in the first video of the series with the square. After you have the center complete, then we'll move on to round three, which is the one where we'll be shaping our hexagon. I'll put the instructions for the first two rounds here on the screen, and you can pause the video and complete your center circle. Or feel free to check out my first video and we can work through them together. Now that you have your center circle complete, you should have 24 stitches. Let's do some calculating. A hexagon has six corners, so to find the number of stitches per edge, we start by subtracting the number of stitches for the corners, which is six, from our total stitches in the round, which is 24. We end up with 18 remaining stitches. Now divide this number, 18, by the six edges, and what we get is three stitches per edge. So now our hexagon will use one stitch for each of the six corners and three stitches for each of the six edges and all together that equals 24. Let's see what this is going to look like on a real crocheted piece. You can see three stitches are used to create each edge and one corner stitch is used to create the corners for the next round. My corners are always made by working two stitches with a chain stitch to turn the corner. And in this case, I used double crochet, chain two, double crochet in the one corner stitch. The hexagon having more corners changes two things from the square that we worked on. The corners are not as sharp, so I use a chain two instead of a chain three, and the edges are not as long, so I can use stitches that are all the same height to get my straight edge from a curve. I like to use the double crochet stitch. Now, let's get into round three of our shape that makes it into a hexagon. We start this piece with a standing double crochet, so two loops around the hook, Insert into your stitch, but not with the cut end underneath it. We leave that loose and complete your double crochet. Now we want to go ahead and work a double crochet in the next stitch. So this is the first half of your last corner or first corner, whatever you want to call it. Now we're going to work three of these double crochets in separate stitches to create our edge. That's our edge, one, two, three. And now we're going to work a corner in the next stitch, double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet. I don't do a chain three like I do for the square because it's not as sharp of a corner because there's more of them. So that's our corner and that's our edge. This is going to happen six times around. Of course, this is the first half of the last corner. That's the way I like to do it. I like to start in the first half of the corner. 
So we're going to do another edge, three double crochet across the next three stitches. So that's one, two, and three. And then we work a corner, which is a double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet. So that is our second corner and our second edge. You're going to keep on working just like this until you get back to this last stitch. This last stitch will be a double crochet from your edge and then we will finish the last corner together. So remember, keep moving three double crochet and then a corner, which is a double crochet, chain two, double crochet all the way around. So we've worked our way all the way around and we have five corners because we're on our sixth one here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six edges. One, two, three, four, five, six. We ended with these three double crochets for the edge. And now we're going to complete this corner. It's our sixth corner. So a double crochet in the same stitch that we joined in. Chain two. And here's where I slip stitch in this first double crochet. I usually do a slip stitch instead of an invisible join when I have a chain stitch that I'm working on here. And there you go. You finished your six corners and your six edges. The other thing I do is I'll cut this end, but I will leave it long enough to use it to sew my pieces together. This saves me darning in extra ends when I sew these hexagons together into a bigger project. In this case, I've joined seven hexagons, one in the center and six around the edges, and finished off with a single crochet border to make a nice trivet. I just whip stitched them to the center and then I whip stitched them to each other and then I worked a single crochet. So I decreased here and I increased here. So the increase is simply a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So basically two single crochets in there and the chain one just gives a little space for the corner. And then when I reached this inside part, I single crochet decreased over these two corners just to pull it in so that there wasn't extra fabric there. That's a very simple way to use up these scraps and create just a little trivet to go in your kitchen. It's beautiful home decor, simple, fun, and lots of color. And that wraps up our second shape. The next time you're transforming a circle into a hexagon, remember this simple math to determine where your corners should be and how many stitches are needed for each edge. Each of these small pieces use less than four grams of yarn and can be whipped up in no time. Keep an eye on my Instagram and YouTube community channel where I'll be sharing more photos of fun projects made with these quick and easy shapes. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my upcoming tutorials. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you in the next tutorial of this series which will focus on the octagon.